death. It's the most powerful, profound, raw, realist way to get in touch with your life. It's not that death is this scary, evil monster, because also we have suffering and scary and evilness in lived life. Quite frankly, life is not guaranteed, and death can happen at any time. My name is Mengda Sengwen Peng, and I'm a death doula. There are common regrets of people at the end of their lives. Working too much instead of maybe being with their loved ones or their families. I think a big regret is living for other people, expectations of other people, of our society at large. It really comes down to what you really want to be doing in your life. What makes your life worth living? It's a very jarring experience to see your loved one when they're dying because it's not the same flesh and fullness and rosiness that you see them in. There may be irregular breathing patterns, something called a death rattle is very common as well. There may be a sense of what people would say confusion and others saying that they're transitioning. It's common for people to see loved ones or places. My mother, she was diagnosed with cancer and within two months she had died. Although a lot of people wish for your loved ones to have this beautiful death that's just peaceful, and my mother's was not. It felt like time collapsed in that moment. I found myself being with her bedside and doing all of the things that are required as someone's body is shutting down, and then also washing her body. Being with her as simply by holding her hand and literally watching her breath decrease and decrease and decrease until it was her last. The world stops and you're just wondering, is she dead? Is this person no longer here? A death doula is a non-medical support guide, and this is a person that can help you navigate the end of life. And this mirrors the birthing process, so someone that helps someone through birth. Death doulas help people through death. This can look like planning for your end of life wishes. It can be a person that helps you prepare and plan your funeral, close accounts, all this earthly stuff that is required of us. This is a person that can also be with you bedside as you are dying and helping the families along this process. We're there to encourage them to say it's okay to let go. Being with individuals at such insurmountable amounts of suffering and pain, witnessing someone knowing that they are ready and knowing that they can no longer proceed, I think feels inhumane at a point and it becomes a big question of ethics. So I support people having a choice on how they would like to have their deaths. I've realized that I've had a relationship with death without naming it as so. My father's from Laos, so I have this Eastern perspective on death. I grew up talking about death with my father, and those things were encouraged. In my culture, there's a lot of emphasis on celebrating the life. We have grieving processes and rituals. It's not that like death is like this scary, evil monster, because also we have suffering and scary and evilness in lived life. Going through my mother's death, I just recognized how fragmented our systems can be and how confusing and complicated it was. It's extremely contrasting than Eastern counterparts where you have so much community and support and a lot of people are there to help you through dying and grief. I recognize just how disconnected we are from the end of life, how distant and hidden and taboo it was, and how that ultimately is much more harmful to us. Because quite frankly, life is not guaranteed and death can happen at any time. Some people, yes, definitely. When people find meaning, when they have an idea of what may be to come, where this just is not it, and it's not just the grand finale of your existence. I think that brings a lot of comfort. And then I think for others, there's such a thing as it creating anxiety. They might actually fear whatever their beliefs may have been, where they had these ideas of the afterlife, but everything might 
shatter and they might question everything and there could be this sense of I feel like I'm being punished but overall at least from what I've witnessed and listened to from people having a sense of belief in something is really helpful. I want to say to people that are grieving to please lean in and tend to your grief. Grief impacts all parts of our existence and it is something that can really be a form of transformation. Grief is an expression of your love of loss and there's a saying that grief is too heavy for one person to hold, so definitely reach out, be in community, find your grief workers, your death workers, your therapists, whomever, to really help navigate you because I've seen people really become hardened by not tending to their grief. Yes and no. I have fears of death, but not physical fears. If I died tomorrow, I wouldn't be fearful about that. I think it would just be a longing to do more in this life and keep going. My dream death would be I've lived an entire full life that I'm ready. I've checked off my list and loved the loves and I'm surrounded by loved ones. They know what kind of celebration of life that I'd want. Okay, this is my coming out of the ghost closet. I've seen a ghost. I was 10, 11, and it was just a night where my mom wanted to go to a Walmart. And we're driving down the street, and right in the middle of the road, I see this figure, translucent white figure, but it's clear enough to see that it was like a woman. And I looked over at my mother, and my mother didn't flinch, and she didn't see anything, so. I believe in ghosts. What I'd want to say to those that are dying is to know that it's okay to let go and it's okay to transition and that if they can recall the most joyous, loving moments of their life, to have that in their hearts with them as they move through this.